Okay, all welcome. Let's see if uh, nah, it looks okay. Again, my question is, how come the preview doesn't match this? Let me fire up a chat and see if y'all can hear me. Finally found out where the bagpipe was coming from. Bagpipe sound at 7 p.m. where everyone makes all the noise and the clapping and everything like they're doing now for our uh, healthcare professionals. And uh, someone in my building I actually saw him waiting out front uh, before. And power hour number 20. Okay. Tech Guy Brian, Mike Berg, Andrew W., Scott Bogfoot, Justin, thank you for moderating. Let me know if um, I'm coming across voice-wise. The video seems to be okay. Looks a little dark. It's okay in the preview, but I'm looking here. Maybe. Oops. As I shine the light into the phone. Yeah, I actually picked up um, an LED panel, another one like I have... Um, Okay, cool. Thank you, Andrew. Um, picked up another LED panel like I have for the test bench when I do the mining MX and uh, teardowns and stuff. And uh, fired it up here, and it looks terrible. <laughs> um, it, it's curious. Uh, I've been looking at what some of the other reviewers, well, what the reviewers do. I'm not a reviewer. Um, and uh, uh, it, it seems, you know, some of them use a single LED panel, but uh, I think it's the phone. It's just the camera is fantastic for some things, but just not others. I need a manual camera, but uh, someday, maybe someday. See who is here today. Mr. Mufu to you. Good evening. I think Tech Guy, Tech Guy Brian, I think I said hello, but if not, hello, Nick McMinn. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Steven Sora. Good evening. Storer. Sorry. Uh, let me do a little tilt here. Get the reflections out. Okay. Forrest, hello. Dart Pog. Oh boy, dart, boy. dart Frog Paul. Three times fast. No way. Thank you for joining us, Brad Palmer. Good evening, sir. <coughs> Excuse me. Hello, Scott Bogfoot. I think I said hello as soon as I came on. But if not, hello again. Yeah, I finally wrote down some of the things I've been watching. Um, I caught um, a Rambo, Last Blood, last night. It showed up on Amazon Prime, and I'm like, okay, you know, for free. I'll, well, quote, for free. Since I'm already a subscriber, it's for free. And it uh, wasn't too bad. I'm surprised. May I look that good at, what is he, 66 years old? Am I thinking of the right person? Um, Sylvester Stallone? Anyway, it looked great. The movie, eh, that's what I expected. It wasn't too bad. Um so uh, uh, diverting, it wasn't terrible. John Bedinati, welcome. Jeff Lawson, Tobai, hello. Good morning from Berlin. Nobody vapes, good evening. Thanks for joining us. <coughs> Excuse me. Try to keep the sniffing and coughing, and et cetera, down for the uh, another two months of pollen that uh, I get to enjoy. Nuno Miguel, hello. Yeah, I was going to do, um, I was thinking, it's funny, yesterday I was thinking, yeah, you know, let me do something different for buffets today. And uh, I haven't vaped once today, not once. Just zooming around, being productive, and um, I don't get the urge until I'm stressed. So it, it just wasn't. I wasn't going to vape away e-liquid just for the sake of vaping. You know, for me, it's it's to address an urge or, or my oral fixation. And uh, and I usually don't get that until I'm stressed. Tonight, I will be vaping because I have to work on notes for two uh, Mining Your Moz episodes and uh, a special project. So that'll be a little bit stressful just sitting there working on that stuff. But uh, it was funny. I, I sat down. I said, oh, wow. I haven't vaped at all yet. I've got nothing to show for the power hour. But uh Maybe I can work on a really good, stressful Sunday morning and afternoon next week, so I have a really, really good buffet then. Kevin Violetto, what's up? Thanks for joining us. Duncan Yo-Yo One, hello. Coxie of New P, or of Noop, from Wales. Thank you for joining us. I am not a, a god of any kind, and uh, but thank you for the kind words. I'm not even a battery expert. I'm a guy who does a lot of testing and reads a lot and and has an opinion about things like 
Galisi not saying shit about their uh, charger recall. There will be a mining of mods about that. Well, actually, as of uh, day before yesterday, I haven't checked today. Well, they they were kind enough to put up a post of a vape model in blue, and uh, Galisi commented underneath, blue, 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 blue. You know, that kind of stunningly useful post is exactly what the community needs when there's been a recall of of company's charger. I mean, nothing instills confidence like the company going blue, 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 blue. Oh, and that they have batteries in Vietnam. Jared Garrett, hello, welcome. Boxcar Rick, thanks for joining us. <coughs> Excuse me. So, before we dive into some questions, it's a couple of shows. I want to hear the kind of shows that you guys are watching too. Um, but just some of the things that I've kind of enjoyed and um, things that I've been watching, well, over the past few months, The Witcher. Uh, I enjoyed it took a couple episodes, like always, to warm up, and then I kind of like a Tales from the Loop on uh, Netflix that just started up recently. There's some interesting stories there. Uh, Umbra, or Shadow, uh, it's a Romanian uh, mafia kind of crime thing. Very very much a character study. <laughs> no explosions, no nothing like that. But it's a really interesting story there. And then uh, Dracula was a lot of fun. Um, that surprised me. Umbrella Academy, Peaky Blinders, Dark... Extraction, the movie um, with uh, Thor. What's his name? Chris? Is it Chris Helmsworth? Is that his name? It wasn't too bad. Uh, I kind of enjoyed that. Narcos, great series. Narcos Mexico. Uh, the Rain, nice, interesting series coming out of Northern Europe. I forgot which country. And uh, Altered Carbon, I enjoyed. Um, first season, much more than the second season. I didn't like that actor, actor for the second season. But the lead changes every uh, season. So that'll be interesting to see. Ozark, yes, nobody vapes. Thank you. That is on my list, my watch list. That's the word. Nobody vapes. Remember when Galisi was the darling of the vape game like a year ago? It's funny. They, yeah, they just one over one to two month period. They just gave everyone chargers and and or uh, paid fees or whatever, um, you know, for the promotion. But you know, handed out the chargers and the batteries and stuff. And then they didn't follow up, which is fatal. I mean, that's one of the things the China companies just don't get. You can't just whoosh and spend some money and some time and then disappear and try to ride that off for a year. Because your competition, if they do anything make, or noticed at all, then pff, your company disappears. It is a year-long, every-year process. And uh, I never, I don't think I've tested a single Galisi charger. I just, nobody was buying them after that first big push. Nothing against the chargers, except that, you know, one of them has been recalled and I'm worried about the others. We'll see what they say after um, uh, people start screaming. Anybody watch Upload? Nice bit of vape bashing in it. Yeah, maybe I won't watch it then. <laughs> Scott Bogfoot, do you know of any? Could you do a vid of kid-related battery experiments? Safe chem uh, Many vapors have kids that are are bored and undereducated during this lockdown. Hmm, that's an interesting thing, but it's a lot to take on uh, time-wise and stuff to start up and to to write up a new curriculum and things like that. Uh, I think if I had more time, I would I would expand into that. Um, actually, it's worth writing down. That's worth thinking about looking into. Scott Bogford, thank you very much. Um, trouble is, it would be done with uh, double A's or triple A's, not with lithium ions. So all the vapors would have to buy, maybe not all, but you'd have to buy new batteries because you, you don't want an accident to, re to result in an explosion. You want an accident to result in a slightly warm battery. And that's why, you know, double A's or triple A's or even, you know, button cells, um, you know, if a button cell with an LED you know, and a resistor or, or, you know, something like that. Um, kid battery videos. But I actually, now I'm thinking more, more kind of like the idea. It's time. You know, what, what do I give up to do those? But uh, the longer we're in lockdown, <laughs> the more people want to, uh, you know, either stomp each other or, or uh, get out. So maybe come up with something that they can do. And uh, some links, I guess, to maybe batteries or uh, kits. I know there's some uh, experimenting kits for kids out there. So maybe a couple links that they can just buy a kit. Even if I don't do anything, uh, post up like, hey, you know, here's a company that has, you know, 
you know, pretty safe kits for kids and stuff to play with, or, you know, uh, adult supervised kids playing with batteries kind of things. Thank you, sir. For anybody who has a question, um, battery space mooch. You don't need a hashtag. You don't need an ad symbol. Battery space mooch. Nice big red tag. I can red tag. I can see the question in chat. Guess I won't be watching the second season of Alton Carbon. No, watch it because a lot of people like it. I just didn't like that actor. Uh, the story is still interesting. They go into a lot of the background, a lot. So they still cover a lot of things there, and you always get to see Poe. So that's worth watching the second season for. Well, I happen to love Poe. First season especially. Second season, okay perfectly cast. Whoever that actor is who plays Poe, it's fantastic. Grim Green was going to get some. The live chat was like, no, get Molly Cell or something. Oh, so Grim was going to get some Galizi batteries? There's no reason to. There's nothing special about them. Get, get Molly Cells. Everybody wants the latest battery. And it's like, just because it's the latest doesn't mean it's any better than something that came out six years ago. Devs was a nice series. Devs. I'll see what that is. Thank you. <laughs> Nobody's vape said like 100 people told him to get Molly sales. Oh, Scott Bockfoot. Oh, awesome suggestion. Thank you, sir. Avoid button sales. Too many kids swallowing them. So triple, double A's it is. Or the kits, whatever those kits are. But the kits are probably like $25 or something. Yeah, well, actually, you know what? Buying the stuff separately would be $25 too because you get like some batteries and stuff from here and then you're getting some wire and some LEDs from here and it just starts to add up um, to, to something uh, kind of crazy. Nobody vapes. And the last series of Westworld. Told by, I, I, yeah, the begin, the end of season two, I was like, what the hell is going on? No. So I haven't watched season three. But now I'm hearing like there's, a, there's some kind of omnipotent computer that's running the world or something. And I'm like, what? So they maybe they came back into something I'm watching. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll give it a chance again. Alexander stepping up to the plate. S-E-K. S-E-K. Is there a Krona involved there for the K? Actually, I don't know what the... Um, not denomination. Currency is there, but thank you very much. And, and my pleasure to advice on the loads. I hope you find something that uh, works well for you. Thank you for the uh, super chat. Scott Bogfoot, Great Canal Journeys. I've seen a couple of those. It was when they were on PBS. And uh, this old house, I still enjoy. There's a season on now. I always like the first like five episodes or so because I love the, the framing, the foundations, the demolition and that kind of stuff. The furniture, the paint. Wall finishes, stuff like that. Not so much. Plumbing, I still enjoy. You know, I guess it's the stuff where you get to use power tools. That's the stuff that I enjoy. Phil Lee, yeah, imagine inhaling a tube mod full of button cells. <laughs> yeah, button cells and then magnets. The um, <sighs> neodymium magnets, especially if you swallow two of them, because then they can, you know, even though this is the fold of the intestinal tract, you know, the two magnets can just pull right through the walls of the intestines to try to join up together. It's a horrifying damage that can, those magnets can do if they're swallowed. John Beninati asks what my thoughts are on Sony VTC4s. He got three sets on sale for $250, good price, from IMR for backup mods. And a person said, I wish you would have spent twice as much for Molly Cells. I, I, I say price doesn't matter for me, personally. Price doesn't matter because you're going to have the batteries for a couple of years, and any price difference disappears when you consider that every single day for two years you can enjoy the better performance of perhaps a more expensive cell. Now, VTC4s are fantastic, you know, 20 amp, 25 amp, I rate them 23 amp batteries. So uh, you will get great use out of those. But I still keep going back to the Molly cells because we get to support authorized vendors, known manufacturer, known grade cells from a company that supports us as opposed to gray market excess inventory, who knows how they've been stored or when they were made. Hopefully they're genuine other cells uh, on there. But you won't be unhappy with, with VTC4. So, you know, they'll be genuine coming from IMR batteries. A Soul Light asks, how come nobody makes e-bike battery packs with replaceable cells? There's no profit in that. Um, 
Yeah, it'd be great to place only the dead cells. You need a battery management system, a BMS, that would tell you which cells were dead. Though I guess if you see the reduced performance, you can go in and start measuring everything. Um, you can include a manual with the pack for, for diagnostics and troubleshooting and stuff like that. I think it makes for a very expensive pack. Um, it's hard to come up with a high current rating for interconnects, for connecting one cell to the next, just with a press fit, like some kind of comp compressing plates against the top or a grid of you know, nickel strips or something against the top and the bottom, like the VRUZ, V-R-U-Z, um, solderless battery connection kit. It's very expensive to do that versus just uh, spot welding and stuff the packs together. And for the people doing their own packs, the least expensive method, they're, they're just going to spot weld it together and go, oh, I'll deal with replacing cells later. I think it's just price point. They can't come up with a good thing other than VRUZ. I mean, the VRUZ kit, V-R-U-Z, is, is one where you can... Uh, pop the top off, you kind of pry it off, take out your cell, put another one in, you know, compress it all together, wire tie it or band it together, and uh, you're off and running again. Austin P, stepping up plate with the Super Chat, $5, thank you. I just recently bought an 18500 mech and didn't realize that it was. Oh, no. Not many choices for batteries, but any you can recommend? I've tested two. Um, not the VAP cell. There were two others. And like, was it an eFest and something else? I don't remember. Uh, one of them was better than the other, but if you follow the link to my blog at ECF in the description section, you can go and look up um, my master list of battery tests. There's only two entries in the 18500 section. You can take a look which one is better. I, I want to test the VapCell one. I have to uh, do some Google fooing and uh, find it and, and get some of those ordered. I hope, hopefully they're for sale because... Uh, that cell typically has some pretty good cells. So the, the new K30, the 3000 mile one, doesn't perform nearly as well. It's like 15, 20% less runtime than uh, VTC6, 30Q, HG2. Not a great cell. If it's for $2, though, eh, okay, but it won't be for $2. Some people, price is a priority, and that's okay. I understand that. Stephen Storer, sorry to hear that... Uh, the plumbing job is getting you down. Hopefully you can find some diamonds in someone's um, sink trap or something like that, and uh, they're willing to share with you. Jason Barrow has some LG HD2s that are approaching one year old. They only take 1,800 to 2,000 ma on the recharge. Don't last quite as long as they did. All right, so certainly if they only take 1,800 to 2,000 ma on the recharge, they might be at 25, 2,600. What's important is what did they used to take on the recharge, 2,500 or something like that. But whatever it is, if they're just, if you're noticing, if they're, if they're starting to bug you, then it, in terms of the loss of performance, then it may be time to replace them. Certainly if they're acting weird, they're getting beat up, um, they're running hotter, you know, there's, there's no, there's nothing written down for the manufacturers other than a 20% loss of capacity equals what they define as typically end of life. So, so you may have reached the point if you're just going, oh, these freaking things, I got to recharge them all the time. Well, then you go time to replace. If none of the other things I mentioned are, are here. But Jason then says they still last all day. They work fine. Just don't want a ham. Okay. <laughs> it's up to you. If, if it's gotten to a point where you'd like to replace them, there's nothing that we can point to, that anyone can point to and go, oh, you know, replace them uh, in terms of... Uh, capacity loss or, or something other than what you and your best judgment would consider to be safety related because you're the ones living with them. So don't don't take any chances with any batteries. They're already dangerous enough, dangerous enough to use outside of a battery pack. Not dangerous, just not safe. Nathan DeHay, hi Mooch. Thanks for your help with explaining the series parallel regulated questions. Still don't quite understand how it's the same, but always working on it. Oh, in terms for a regulated device? I think maybe the last two minutes of what I was saying, it, Nathan's talking about my latest video where I talk about um, series, how batteries add up in series in parallel, how the voltage can add up or the capacity or the current ratings. And in a regulated device, it doesn't matter whether your batteries are connected in series or in parallel. They handle the same amount of current per battery for each. And the best way to look at it is wattage per battery. If you've got a device running at 100 watts, with two batteries, it's 50 watts per battery. It, it, that doesn't change depending on whether it's series or regulated. You've got 100 watts 
Both batteries are contributing in series. Both batteries are contributing when they're wired in parallel. So for both setups, it's 50 watts per battery. Now, each battery has its own fixed voltage, 4.2 volts or less. And they're all, let's say, four batteries, or two batteries in series, two batteries in parallel, two different mods. If all the batteries run it are you know the same 4.2 theoretically battery, and they're all running at the same power levels, then they're all giving the same amount of current because current times voltage equals power. So no matter whether they're in series or in parallel, they're always giving the same amount of wattage each battery. So they're all running, at delivering the same amount of current. Another way to think of it is in series, you've got a higher voltage. Uh, nope, it's just gonna make things more complicated. Watch the video. It's a long five minute complicated thing. Best way to think of it is just wattage. The wattage per battery is equal. And since all the batteries are equal voltage, you know, on paper, then they all have to deliver the same amount of current, whether it's in series or parallel. So anybody had a question? Battery space mooch in the front. Carlos Soto Gill asks, what's your preferred build on a single battery mech? Um, I don't have a preferred build because I just grab whatever I find in my pile of coils. I don't even, you know, I'll throw in a regulated mod, make sure it's not shorted. Um, typically, a single battery mech, you know, you want simple round wire or maybe a Clapton. You don't want anything high mass because um, you just don't have the power available for it. Uh, I'm using, you know, 0 0.15, 0 0.17 um, fuse Clapton's on there, but a round wire bill would be even better, you know, probably Nichrome or something to, uh, you know, speed up your ramp up time. Because again, you're very limited on power. I know some people like, oh, I get tons of power from mech. Not as easy as you can from a series mech, a single battery mech, not as easy as you can from a series mech or a regulated device. So uh, that that's the one advantage of a regulated device, being able to find your sweet spot very easily and being able to pump tons of power effortlessly effortlessly without worrying about coil resistances and stuff like that. Anything over about 0.17 on a single battery mech, and you, you have to be willing to accept a cooler uh, cooler vape, which may be exactly what you might be looking for. Mr. Mufu to you, I bought a Vapcell S4 Plus supercharger. Well, I'm glad it's not a regular charger. You want super ones. I like it. Thoughts? None. Absolutely none. I don't know a Thing about it, but if it's working well for you and you like it, then it's a fantastic charger. Scott Bogfoot, you mentioned they have a steam pipe under your apartment. Do MYC still have underground steam system pumping steam in the buildings? Yes. In fact, I, I think it's the largest in the country. The Empire State Building is still running on steam, still from 1933 or something. And there's a huge number of buildings in midtown Manhattan that are still running off steam for their heating and for other things that go on inside the building. I forgot what it was, but for heating, and you know, heat up hot water and stuff like that. But the Empire State Building still runs on it, and there's still monstrous, huge, you know, one meter at least big steam pipes. Uh, we were getting a lot of accidents recently. Just, you know, one of those pipes blows, and it's just this cloud of steam going up at least 100 meters and the sound, you know, like a jet engine, because it's pressurized, what are called super critical steam or, or whatever it is, like super, super high temperature steam. Horrifying. Uh, you know, some people have been badly, well, killed and badly burned, of course, by that kind of steam, um, but just swallows up the street and just rockets up uh, to the tops of the uh, skyscrapers in midtown Manhattan. So there's still an awful lot of steam here, and we still have a steam generating facility in Manhattan um, on, along one of the rivers. Uh, generating steam for all these buildings and the huge network that they still have running underground. Because it's just, you know, if you say, oh, you know, we can uh, redo um, the Empire State Building to a different type of heating. What? You know, there'd be a billion dollars to do that. They're just, in fact, they, they would probably buy the steam plant before they decided to redo the Empire State Building. Um, and, you know, for... Um, Scott Bogfoot for uh, residents, residential buildings, there's got to be tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of small homes and buildings uh, that still use steam for the heating. Because um, that's where they built originally, and the electrical just can't support electric heating, like baseboard heating or, or um, something like that. 
I'm I'm in a pre-war building, 1926. Beautiful architectural details. Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, oh, it's Adobe brick. Um, walls 12 inch thick. My floor is uh, reinforced concrete, uh, 18 inches thick. I I don't. I have a neighbor with a piano next to me. I've heard that piano faintly, I think twice, in all the years I've been here. So that's fantastic. And the building is essentially fireproof, but uh, uh, it, it makes a challenge for anyone trying to do redo the electric or something like that. Mohammed T, hello. I forgot two Sony VT6, VTC6 batteries. When they discharge, I charge them in an XTAR VC4. They charge only about 1,700 mAh. That's supposed to be 3,000. Ah, you're worried that they're fake batteries. Well, remember, or not remember, but realize that your charger is only showing you what it's putting back in the batteries if you remove 1700 milliamp per hour 1700 ma then when you recharge them it's only going to say 1700 in we never bring our batteries all the way down to 2.5 volts down to essentially empty what would be zero percent on a device or something like that zero percent on a vaping device is typically around 3.2 volts 3.1 volts or something so you're never going to get 3000 back in to a 3,000 milliamp hour battery when you charge it, unless you bring it down to 2.5. So I don't know if your battery is so fake or not, but the capacity going in, that's not telling you anything other than how much you took out of the battery. Westinghouse is 18500s, huh? Chasing clouds, you have four 18500s, but no 18500 mod yet? That's interesting. There, that sounds like a spur of the moment purchase. I guess it could be used as inspiration. Oh, I got these batteries. I better buy a mod. James West, should two-year-old VTC 5As be discarded if they are still in good shape and perform well? Well, why would you want to discard them then? Not trying to be nasty. I'm genuinely asking you, what would make you want to dis discard them if they're performing well and still doing thing, still doing well, or you know, still in good shape? It's, it, there's no calendar date on them uh, for, for replacing them. A lot of people say, oh, replace them once a year. Not because you have to, not because of any man, anything any manufacturer says, but because it's just easy to say, oh, it's Christmas, replace all my batteries. It's kind of like me. Oh, it's New Year's, change the batteries and all the smoke alarms, whether they need it or not. It's just better than, you know, throughout the year, hearing different ones start beeping at me because they need batteries replacing. Just replace them, all of them. Replace all of them on January. So, and it's still in decent condition. If they're still performing well, if they're not acting weird, I don't know what the internal condition of your batteries are. Use your best judgment, but there's nothing inherent in the calendar age of a battery that requires you to replace them. Nathan to hey, $2 super chat saying thank you. Thank you for the super chat. Our moderator, Justin, says... Thoughts in his XTAR ST2 charging up to 4.23 volts on the P26A. Well, that, that tells me it's a low impedance cell, a low internal resistance cell, which encourages, uh, which allows the device easier to go up to a higher voltage. The Molly cells are, uh, all our cells are rated to up to 4.25 volts. Um, it's not fantastic for the cell. It, it, uh, you know, going up to 4.15 or 4.1, lose little capacity, battery lasts a lot longer. I'm not too worried about it if you like the charger otherwise. Um, uh, not too many feelings about it just because it, it happens so often. Once you're getting up to some of them, what, what was it, an E-Fest or something? It was like 4.26, 4.27. Then I'm like, okay, enough, enough, it, no, stop. You know, try to get these back down to something lower. Uh, and, you know, I would, in one of my test reports, I would say, yeah, no, don't buy this one. You, you just don't need to. But part of me goes, hey, in an ideal world, you got lots of money. Why put up with a charger that charges them so high? But it's hard to find a charger that does it lower because uh, the marketing groups at these charger companies, I think, this is conjecture, say, look, we want it really high. We want to maximize the charge. We don't care about cycle life. They don't. Why would they? There's no reason to. What they care about is you going, oh, this battery runs for a long time or something like that. The last thing you're going to blame is the charger if you only get 150 cycles out of a battery. So they don't care. They don't have to care about cycle life. They just want you to be able to see at least 4.20 volts and maybe a cell's age 
and normally they only charge a 4.15. Well, if on your charge of the ST2, they can go up to 4.19 or something, you're still going to be happy then. You're going to think, oh, awesome charger. You know, this thing doesn't work. With, this thing only goes to 4.12 on an EFAS, but on my charger, you know, 4.1819. So for that, they may start up a little higher. Or you just got um, the tolerance for them might be like, you know, 4.18 to 4.25 or something, and you just got a slightly higher one. Joe Stern, hope all is well. Thank you. Hope all is well going for you. Regards from Israel. Nice to catch some of the live show again, or the show live again. Oh, thank you for joining us. For most use, you have to run the superheated steam through a heat exchanger to get safe heat inside a building. That, I believe. You certainly don't want to pump um, high-pressure steam to each apartment or each office. You would want separate local loops. Um so none of the pressure, lower temperature, et cetera, uh, makes it into the building. What does Mr. Mooch vape? Well, today, no um, no buffet because I haven't, haven't vaped today. No stress, nothing making me uh, think about vaping. So I didn't get anything prepared. It was stupid. Uh, it's just, you know, five minutes before the show, I'm like, oh, crap, the show. Um, and, and jumped on. So I didn't even grab something just to kind of show. But in the other ones I, I show, I've been doing a lot with the uh, the top side, um, Minikin V2, uh, the clutch, Guten 1.5, uh, intake dual RTA. Uh, when I grow up and I'm rich, I want to get the uh, intake uh, sub ohm tank. I think that'd be fun to play with that, that corrugated uh, mesh coil. Uh, he doesn't call it mesh, what I call it. I call it a weave coil, but uh, they call it the mesh, the Clapton mesh. Chasing clouds and flavor reviews. I got the Westinghouse 18500s in trade with a mech that supposedly would work with 18500s, but found it only takes 18650s and 18350s. Ah, okay. Justin Vickers, one channel charger comes off of 4.21, the other 4.23 on either 4 amp or 2 amp. Try, try the, yeah, I tried the lowest amp setting. Let's see. Um, also, see where they settle out to. Come back in an hour and check the voltage on the cells because. The higher the charge rate, the more the ions pile up in one part of the battery, creating a voltage rise across the battery that might read 4.23 volts. But that's not its true voltage. It's like in a discharge, the voltage is low and it kind of rises back up to the true resting voltage. When you're charging, the voltage is high because of the uneven distribution of the ions inside the battery, and it will settle down to its true resting voltage. It may settle down to 4.20. So try you know, an hour or two later, uh, and you can try again 24 hours later. But an hour or two later, you'll have an idea of what the resting volt, the true resting voltage is. Alexander asks, uh, any advice on charging tennis 5P? Just go by the CCCV curve? No, I'd say check the cells and see what the cells require. Um, you know, if, if uh, one amp is recommended, charge at five amps. If you have good distribution, I, th I would suspect, you know, good low impedance low resistance connections between the cells and the 5P. Uh, so the current sharing is equal on charge or discharge. Um, I don't try to interpret charging or discharging curves to figure out how you can charge them. Temperature is critical. The cells in the middle of the pack are gonna get hotter. So, you know, if you come in at, uh, uh, you know, one C or less, you know, for the average uh, power cell, you know, 15, 20 amp, 25 amp cell or something, you should be fine see what the temperature in the middle of the pack is. If it's more than what you call a little bit warm, don't go any higher because you're just artificially aging or accelerated the aging of the cells. Phil Lee has worked on steam boilers which superheated to 250 PSI. Yeah, I don't think I'd want to be in that room if something let go. Tanner Feltner. Battery space mooch in the front, just to make sure I saw it, but I saw one above yours. Otherwise, I would never seen yours. Just got a XTAR VC8 and some 30Ts. And when the batteries charge completely, some of the batteries voltage say 4.2 and a couple said 4.17. Why does this happen? Well, every charger channel is a little different than every other channel, and every battery is different than every other battery. Mark your batteries, one, two, three, four, whatever, and start trying them in different slots. Namely, you want to see battery one what is it charged to in each slot? And if you see 4.7 in one and 4.2 in another, then you know it's a charger. If you see battery one charge of 4.17 in every single slot and battery two at 4.2 in every single slot, 
then you know it's the batteries. So with a little detective work over a little bit of time, you can figure out if it's the charger or the batteries. But either one of those is fine. And it's really time critical. If you take a pull off one and look, take a look at the voltage immediately, and maybe the charge, the charge finishes, and five minutes later, you pull the battery out, it can drop from 4.2 to 4.17 volts. So you've got to be there the instant the batteries stop charging or charge them all and come back and look at them 24 hours later. That gives them all time to settle out to the true resting voltages and you can start to see. But otherwise, a minute or two here or there could easily account for a 4.17 to 4.20 difference. Mr. Mufu to you, is using a variable voltage power supply feasible only for charging? Only if it's a constant current, constant voltage supply. Otherwise, the battery will just short circuit the output of a regular power supply, uh, variable voltage power supply. It has to be constant current, and you have to set the current limit low enough. And then you've got to come back. The battery will just charge. If you leave it on, if you leave the battery on the charger, excuse me, on the power supply for a year, the battery will be charging continuously for a year, which is really bad for it. There's no automatic turnoff. Uh, a, a battery charger is just a constant current, constant cold voltage power supply with some protection and a timer built into it and some detection on it. So it, there's nothing special about the circuitry itself. Um, so you, you want to be able to come back and go, okay, you know, when I see the current drop to typically less than one tenth your starting current. So if you start at one amp, when it's drop, drops below 100 milliamps, okay, you're pretty well done. That cell is pretty full. You know, stop the charging. Scott Bogfoot, do or did your dad ever smoke? And what does he think about vaping? Uh, you know, he has no opinion, really, but about vaping. He's been, parents have always been very cool about whatever we want to do. They just don't express any opinion one way or the other. Uh, I don't think I've heard him say a single word about it. Uh, no, he's never smoked. Doesn't smoke and never smoked. Well, maybe he did as a kid or something, experimenting, but otherwise, no. Joe Stern, when are you going to finally put out your own mod batteries Addies? Uh, never any Addies, because I just have no idea how to design an Addy. Uh, throw money at the screen. Well, feel free to super chat the hell out of me anytime you want. Um, maybe you can fund some battery and uh, mod development uh, things. Uh, mods and batteries. Um, I've, I've spoken about this in some power hours. The technology just isn't there for me to say that's worth putting my name on. I'm not going to put my name on something that's just the normal little baby evolutionary step in performance, you know, like the Molly cells or something like that. I was considering having uh, Mooch branded Molly cells, but I'm like, like no one's going to buy them. Why would anyone spend a dollar more per cell because of the wraps, additional testing, my profit, all this, when they can get them cheaper? It, no one's going to buy them. A hundred people would buy them and everybody else would go, I'm not spending more for the same thing. We have a very cost-conscious community here. Uh, for a mod, we'll see what happens. Mancunian Biker. Hey, man, what kind of cell technology are you most looking forward to seeing? Not necessarily cells used in vaping either. Uh, I've talked about this in a couple of power hours. Solid-state batteries. I'm interested to see what they do and, and the different flavors of solid-state batteries. There's so many different ways you can do it. True solid state batteries where they're using the same exact um creating the layers that they would in creating integrated solid state integrated circuits creating batteries with that i think that's going to be too expensive though and then sort of hybrid solid state batteries using some of the manufacturing techniques uh for that but i'm looking forward to seeing the safety how that plays out what electrolyte they use um they'll all be very low current rated uh hopefully extremely high capacity batteries so i'm very much looking forward to that i maybe we'll see them in some electric vehicles uh energy storage systems i think too bulk energy storage systems you know battery farms attached to a solar uh solar power farm or to a, a wind farm or something like that to put some of that power back out that it gathers up during the day put it back out at nighttime Right now, that's the one. The things like sodium batteries, the silicon anode batteries that replace some of the graphite, the negative part of the battery. Now, for me, that's evolutionary. The solid state stuff, that's that's a big step. That I'm looking forward to. <clears throat> Nathan DeHay, battery space mooch in the front. Before I discovered you, I was buying them yellow MXJLs because they claim 35 amps. Yeah, it's a bullshit max or pulse rating. I didn't realize they're arbitrary Pulse rating, are they at least a safe 20 amp cell? They claim 20 amps. If you turn to the back of the battery, it says 20 amp CDC, continuous discharge current. 
So they call it the 20. Uh, the early ones, like two, three years ago, four years ago maybe, they were like 30 Qs or something or HG2s or VTC6s. Many of these companies are going to the China cells now. I would hope they were a decent 15, 20 amp cell, but I don't know. I haven't tested them in a couple of years. Certainly if it's running hot, Performing like crap, that's, that's a sign you're, you're overstressing it and drop down 10 amps and, you know, come back up a little bit. Or just get molly cells or something like that. I know, more money, it's easy for me to talk. Scott Bogfoot, what are airplane batteries like? Are they anything like what was shown in the movie Alive? I'm trying to remember what the airplane batteries were then. Well, you've got little packs around, like the pack that caught fire on the Dreamliner or something, which was a lipo pack. Um, I don't know if you're talking about fully electric um, airplanes, which actually Molly Cell is um, in part of with the, the electric. Anyway, it's an organization of electric airplane manufacturers and other representative associated uh, communities like the, the uh, airport owners, regional airport uh, owners and operators and stuff like that to try to get fully electric airplanes going for commuter runs and, and things like that. Uh, they use very different things, but Molly cell round cells, I think P42As were uh, being considered for those because of their high performance, but they use um, like auxiliary power units or standby power or things like that. They'll use lipos because the volumetric efficiency, the, the amount of size and weight for the performance is fantastic for lipos. You just have a, you need a really good battery management system on it. So I don't know if there's anything like the movie Alive. I don't remember the batteries in that story. Um, back then, though, what was that, in the 70s, 80s? Um, probably lead acid. Uh, I don't remember. Were they starting fires? Were, were they short-circuiting um, batteries to start fires or something? Nefarian, your knowledge is essential to the vaping community. When will the FDA classify you as a tobacco product? That's funny. Yeah, be limited. I'll have to get a, a PMTA in order to talk on, um, in order to do the power tap, power hour. I'll need a PMTA. Joe Stern, holy mackerel! We've got about fifteen minutes left. Joe Stern, I'll spend three more per cell if your name was on it. You are in the minority, minority, sir. But thank you very much. Uh, looking forward to a mod you can put your name on. We'll see. We'll see what the future brings us. Certainly have a lot of ideas. More for more for mix than uh, regulated. There's some good chips out there. I, my my sense of visual design, it stark, austere, you know, industrial minimalism. I call it. You know, it's just a a hunk of, of stainless steel. You know, with with a, a stunningly simple interface. Yeah, you know, everyone talked about how simple interfaces are are old school. You know, and they want color or a big screen, maybe not big screen, but color and fancy this and that. I'm like, why? That just makes it harder to read. It draws more power. There's no value added to the mod for it. We're a visually oriented group of people, though, and they want it. For me, my screen would maybe no screen at all. Um, but see, that's why we're a regulated mod. I don't have enough ideas yet. For a mech, I can explore a lot of that little nitty gritty stuff that people think is important, which isn't, and uh, stuff like that, and have that mod, have a mech I did reflect that. Uh, and we'll see what the future brings. Alexander Olin, send me a message if you're interested in some kind of website, custom web page, maybe some interactive cell suggestion. I'm on your patron. Yes, thank you. I remember you are a patron, and I appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you for the offer on the web page. I actually have had a website for about two years, nothing on it yet. It's time, and it would take. And, and for the people who it's, who've offered help, it would take even more time to have to tell somebody else what I wanted because they would have to do that. I've got to go through all the requirements of what I want, then proof everything if they do, proofread everything they do, then test everything they do. And it'd actually take more time for me to do it that way than to do it myself. I sincerely appreciate the offer, though. Thank you very much. But uh, who knows? You know, maybe next summer. You'd think with the lockdown, I have more time. But there's just so many other projects that I want to work on. And, you know, still doing, uh, I still need to do videos and, you know, still answer 100 plus questions a day and stuff like that. I still need to keep my patrons happy. And it's hard to, to start anything new. Shazir so asks, what can make a battery vibrate in a mech mod? Don't know. I've, I've heard that a couple of times. 
um, an intermittent connection, a connection being made and broken and made and broken. Um, does it still do that if you push the button very, very firmly? Because if if it doesn't do it when you push the button very firmly, then I'd say there's some kind of bounce, you know, when arcing happens and it pushes the battery a bit or, or I don't know what. I've never experienced it, so I've never had a chance to kind of poke around and, and play and see if something would cause it or not cause it. But since there's nothing going on in a true mech other than that could cause a vibration, other than something purely mechanical, but I can't think of what that would be, or, or your finger is rattling back and forth a little bit on the button. You know, the button has a little bit of play or something, and that's causing the battery connect and disconnect, and that creates a magnetic field. No, well, there's no steel. If you have a stainless steel mech and a stainless steel battery, every time the battery sparked, if it wasn't a good connection, every time you spark and unspark, you're creating a magnetic field. Maybe that shifts the battery a little bit because it's in a stainless steel mod. Maybe there's something going on with magnetic fields. That's total wild conjecture, though. I'm not even thinking whether it's even remotely possible or not. Anybody with a question? Battery space mooch in the front. Justin, I'd ask if uh, you see anybody with a question without battery space mooch in the front, if you just give them a little, uh, just post uh, in general. Boxcar Rick, I totally agree on the screens issue, battery mooch. I can think of two reviewers who always cried the blue about color and screens, etc. I'm happy with the regular screen, basic as F, LOL. Yeah, at least for me. But that said, I love a beautiful, colorful, complicated, you know, beautifully done graphic screen. But I, I just don't want to use that every day. And I don't like thinking about the extra battery power it draws. Not a lot. Maybe 20, 25 milliamps versus 10 milliamps for a small, simple display. I just like that minimalism thing. You know, one LED that shows you everything. That's not possible because you can't adjust your power levels. But that's the kind of approach I'd have. I'd come up from the bottom as opposed to, you know, okay, I want a 10 inch, 10 inch touch screen on my mod. You know, okay, what do I have to shrink it down to to make this work? No, I'd come up from the bottom going, I got one LED. What do I have to add to that to make this thing useful? Alexander, no worries. I have the same problems with my own projects where I probably should ask someone to help me out. There we go. I'm terrible about that, you know, asking people to help out. So I appreciate you, you offering. Muhammad, I'm begging you to put battery space mooch in the front of your questions. So Rob Scanlon loves his noisy cricket. It started auto firing after two plus years. Not too bad. Though you hope with a mech. It, it would last more than two years, but you might have been losing, using the heck out of it. DeAndre Lewis just bought an uh, XTAR VCC, VC4 charger. Is that a good charger? You're asking after you bought the charger? I've never understood that. I get so many people asking me after they buy something, they wonder if it's a good charger but um, or or good battery or something like that. That's always confused me. Not judging. It's just always confused me to uh, on things. I don't remember if I tested that one. Yeah, you can check my. I, I, if I remembered, if I tested it, I would tell you right now. I'm sorry. Um, check the link in the description section. I blog at ECF. Click on the list of charger tests link. See if I tested it there. Dive in. There's a summary at the beginning of the test report. If it looks good or looks bad, you can choose whether to read the rest of the test report. <laughs> When quitting a biker, so I assume PWM or MOSFET is probably more your thing. Uh, no. Built a few series boxes using MOSFETs, and they've ended up being my daily rigs now. The challenge for me is um, I've got nothing against MOSFET uh, boxes. You know, it certainly helps if, if you have a button. But otherwise, uh, the pure mech, I think if I was going to work on, just because contact design and all those things become much more critical there, um, it, it challenges me more than a PWM or MOSFET box would, which would be a fairly simple build. You know, a lot of people, if I did a MOSFET box, it would be, you know, one that could take, you know, 150 amps or something with the same MOSFETs everyone else uses because I would use, I would use better thermal design for the MOSFETs to keep them cool. Uh, but otherwise, um, no, not as much. I think pure mech and, you know, work off the ideas, the, the myths, the mech myths, the battery myths and uh, design around those and, and to show where you need this and you don't need that and this works and this doesn't work maybe hopefully but for a, a series box 
Um, sorry, just reading something here. Okay. Um, but for series boxes and stuff, like PWM or MOSFET box, fantastic. Get amazing amounts of power. It's not hard to design them well, if you're careful. And, uh, you know, get, get all the power you need, especially if you put lipos in them. Just charge them carefully. Hussam, Amharat, um, 30T or 40T for mech mod mouth to lung setup. I would say, you know, depending if you're drawing seven amps or less, I would look at the 5,000 milliamp hour cells, the VAP cell, uh, 5,000 milliamp hour ones. Uh, even the Samsung 50E, not a great cell. The VAP cell is a little bit better. Blue wrap, I forgot uh, if they had a model number for it. Otherwise, definitely 40T. You want the extra capacity or the Molly cell P42A, which would, uh, I think, be about the same. Maybe run a little bit better than the 40T for mouth to lung setup. But you're drawing very little current. So the 30T is a waste. That the, You don't need the power handling of that, and you're just getting lower capacity. DeAndre Lewis, thanks. You're welcome. I don't remember what I said. And we've got, ooh, eight minutes or so. Not a vape show always seems to be starting a little bit earlier these days. So uh, I like to come off, uh, you know, at uh, 7.57 as opposed to 8. Advocate for Liberty doesn't have a, a potentiometer mod, a PWO mod, but thinking he'd enjoy one, less battery draw than a regulated mod with a screen. Typically, yeah, it, but, it, you know, 15 milliamps less. It really depends how long your screen is on. Um, it can make a big difference or very little difference. But you get a well-designed PWO mod will have less of a voltage drop through the MOSFETs than it would through a full regulated circuit board. So you can get a, a little extra power, maybe slightly. Uh, that actually gives you a longer runtime because your voltage stays up for longer. So, yes, it's a better idea. You're right, and I was wrong. Anthony Michael C says, Gear Falcon charges are good. One of these days, I'll uh, get a pair and test them. Sebastien Jobin, does a 30 amp battery still have 30 amps after two years of use? No. No. Um, the, for the manufacturer, the current rating doesn't change, quote unquote, but effectively it does because your internal resistance goes up, which means the battery is going to run warmer. The capacity goes down, so you want to treat it gentler. Uh, on it because it is an aged battery. So I, I think effectively, yes, that goes down, but there is no guidance, there are no numbers, there's nothing I can say as to how much because it totally depends on the battery and how hard it's being used. Um, you really, we just can't give you a number. It's just the longer you use the battery, the nicer you have to be to it because uh, it's getting old. And as we all get old, we have to be treated more gently. And the same thing for batteries. Shazir. On the vibrating mech, it's on a brass copper mod. Okay, so it's not stainless steel. If I let loose and press the button again, it works normally. Don't really want to keep holding it when it's vibrating, though. I, yeah, I get it. Um, I can only think, the only thing that would make it vibrate is some kind of intermittent connection on the battery. Try it. Try all your button presses, your first button press. Make that one a hard button press and see if it ever happens to you again. If it never happens to you again, then it's you're just not pressing hard that time, and I think it's connecting, disconnecting, connecting, disconnecting, and that's what's causing the um, the vibrating. Particularly if you get a lot of arcing damage with that device, that's an indication that it's uh, might be connecting and disconnecting. Rob Scanlon, thanks for keeping vapors safe. Thank you, sir, for the kind words. An advocate for liberty. Says thank you for all the work, time, and knowledge you put into safety and understanding of vape products, as well as battery safety. Thank you also for for what for what you said there. Scott Bogfoot has a thank you. Your time and patience are very appreciated. Hopefully you don't mind all my non-vaping questions. Not at all, and that's one reason why I'm doing the Power Hour. It doesn't have to be vaping related. That's why I don't put you know answering your vaping device questions or anything there. It's just we're just talking, we're just hanging out. Alexander's questions about e-bike battery packs, other things. I welcome that. I deal with vaping questions. You know, now it's only about a hundred a day, only. Typically, it's 150, 200 a day, and easily over 300 if I post something controversial or, or wildly popular. Dubai also uh, expressed his thanks. <laughs> Mooch is the battery whisperer. No, they still act up with me too, but. Uh, Thank you. And where are we? About three more minutes. So if you have any questions, get them in. Water's gone anyway. I hear a coffee calling my name, I think. Chasing clouds and clever 
Flavor reviews. Flavor reviews. I just actually bought an Indican Chroma R kit with an Ajax tank. I'm lucky. I like being built. Oh boy, I think it is time to stop. I'm liking the Chroma R, the looks on that with the H tank, and it's probably the coolest mod I own now for a single battery. What was it, 80 watts on that one? Am I getting the right one? The brush finish that looks like it was wiped down with ink and the ink kind of wiped off, you know, so you've got uh, dark scratch lines on it. Is that the Chroma R? Am I thinking the right one? John Beninati, thank you. Be blessed. See you next week. John, thanks for joining us. A couple more minutes here, and then we'll get off. Okay, Chasing Clouds, thanks. Yeah, I like the looks of that one. I think not the copper one, because I think it looks kind of fake for me. Copper, it was another color. That one and the Odin single with that heavy brushed um, aluminum, uh, you know, just silver finish. That looked great. Even the black one, the murdered out one was black. But I didn't like the look of the Odin as much, too big. But the Odin Mini, uh, I saw an Instagram shot. Who was it? Dapo, I think, today. and. Uh, that heavy, heavy brush finish, it looked awesome. When I grow up, I'll have money and I'll buy it. Rob Scanlon races RC cars. Why do people who charge a 5,000 mile light bulb battery at 70 amps goes faster than me who charges them at 10 amps? They're heating up the batteries when they do that. A warmer battery has inter less internal resistance, so that can make a big difference. You might try. Uh, don't heat your packs, but you know, try you know, running them straight off the charger and then charge them and, you know, uh, run them an hour later or something and see if you start to see a difference then. Because a, a warm pack, you know, 45, 50 degrees Celsius is going to have a lower internal resistance than a pack at room temperature. And also, they may have picked a higher charge voltage. They may be charging a 425, 43, 435, or they have HV packs, high voltage packs. Slightly a little more punch there. At the expense of cycle life, okay? Your packs are going to last a lot longer overall than their packs are. So it's your choice there. All right, one or two more questions and we're done. You may remember the Dreamliner was grounded due to battery power problems. Yes. Yeah, and that's what uh, made me realize to say, hey, you know, lipos are great. They're lightweight, great power, you know, but you got to you gotta design around them well. And uh, uh, they did not for the Dreamliner. Chasing clouds, yes, I want that as well. Oh, extended life. Okay, then stick to your 10 amps. Um, or whenever you need it, go for it. Outback Vaping, thanks for all you do, mate. Thank you, sir. Thanks for joining us. And I think we'll start to say good night here. Rob Scanlon, packs last a season. There's last two races. There you go. You want 100 cycles or, or five cycles, two cycles? Um, you know, then you can choose. Advocate for Liberty, you have a great night. Very happy I was able to catch a bit of your live for once. I'm glad you joined us. Thank you. And I think we are done. Forrest, thanks for having a great evening. I hope you do too. Everyone, thank you for joining me. Stay safe. Stay sane. And I hope you can join us uh, next Sunday night. Take care, all.